Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's a girl Pauline here. So I hope you all doing fine because I am fantastic and I thank God for this day. Guys, welcome to today's video. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for clicking this video. To my new subscribers, I thank you all. And to my returning subscribers, may God bless each and every one of you. Welcome to another episode, another story time, and this is part four of our Ellen have been deported. If you not want, if you want to know why, if you want to know how, and if you have not yet watched part one, part two, and part three, if you finish this one, kindly go back and watch so that you will know how we get to this part. Thank you for staying tuned. And please, if you find this video amazing, if you love it, kindly give it a thumbs up comment down in the comment section and as well you can share with friends and i'll be so so grateful do not forget to subscribe to my channel and let's go straight to the video and guys so much for welcome and let's go let's see how it went because at our last part where we ended i was still at the police station whereby the lady was called and she was given two days to bring my stuff and to pay for my ticket and to bring everything that she had which belonged to me so guys during this time remember she has been given two days and i am fair so what happened the lady the lady cop she came called me and she was like come have you taken any shower i told her no so she took me to the bathroom she was like just have shower and come have your breakfast and i was like you guy this is a police station i've been treated like this because if it was kenya <laughs> i don't know i will not talk much so she took me, she showed me the bathroom, I went and changed, and I came. When I came, they had like, I think at that time they were also taking breakfast, so I was given some sandwich and tea. I took, and she told me just have a seat there as you work on your case. And guys, I ended up sleeping in the police station. I slept maybe for two or three hours, because remember, the previous night I did not sleep because we were catching up with the other Kenyans at the DCI outside. So I did not sleep. So I ended up sleeping on the couch and she did not wake me up. And waking up, she was also sleeping. I don't know why, but the both of us, we ended up sleeping in that room. So after maybe two hours, she called me and she told me, come. Then I went. And again, now there were two cops, her and one male cop. And this cop was like opening, like he was entering the car and she told me, come. Then I was like, okay, where are we going? Because I couldn't be quiet. Maybe they were going to arrest me or something. She told me, okay, I asked her, did you call the lady? Yes. And what did she say? She said, we have given her two days. And after two days, she should be here with your staff and you will be ready to go home. And I asked her, do you think she will do that? She said, yes, she will. She cannot refuse because that is the law. And if she does, the law will be against her, so she have to do so. And I asked her, do you, do you think, according to what I did, and for me coming here to report, do you think I did wrong? Or is there any action that will be taken against me? She was like, you did not do anything wrong. You just came from the house, running straight to the police station, and wrote your statement the same time you went. So if you had gone outside and decided otherwise to go and work out there, that is when maybe you'll be taken responsible for running away and not going to report the matter. So I was at the safe hands and I was also at the safest side. Side, I mean. So the, the lady, she told me like, but for now, before your lady, she comes, we cannot keep you here at the station because we don't have any place for people to sleep. The only place that we can take you for those two days or three days before you go is at the deportation. And guys, I had to go back to the deportation, but at this time, my fellow Kenyans still were there outside. All the people who I spent the night with were outside, but I couldn't go to see them because I was inside the car. So they took me inside, they went and wrote every statement, they gave me the paper. There was a paper that they had that shows what i did and the action that will be taken to me but nothing was been taken 
but for me I, I i can say i was safe because also they did not take my fingerprints they did not take my picture nothing nothing like mine was nothing so i went we ended inside but of course when we're going inside because inside the deportation there are different people like different people with different cases there are people who have stolen people who have maybe fight people who did things that may made them be deported so i was told like i have to leave my phone at the oh, how can i say the reception if i'm not wrong any money that i have i have to give but just to take little amount of money that i'll be using on a daily basis then the rest i will keep them and maybe you're also given an invoice that shows you have left maybe two phones how much money you had yeah something of that sort so i was given my invoice i still have the letter from that station that they came with and i handed the deportation and there guys i was also received well because of also there were people like ladies from different nationalities and i also met my fellow kenyans hey if you're watching me you know yourself so i also made friends there and i stayed there the first two days the lady did not come the third day and the fourth day that is when they come but she did not show up uh she sent his cousin uh, uh, nephew you remember the nephew who was given my phone the same same nephew was the same person who came to bring my suitcase to bring my money to bring my phone yeah so they came and one morning i was like they just called me because you know there they don't come to your room i let's say they are just like cells they don't come there to call you by name no they have the microphone they are installed everywhere in, inside their deportation so if they speak from the if they call you from the reception you can hear from wherever you are so i was like pauline pauline from ethiopia then i was like ethiopia i'm not an ethiopian so they kept on calling pauline joseph pauline joseph and until i now decided to go then i wondered they were like you don't want to go home i asked them why because we're calling Pauline Joseph Ethiopian, do not come here. I was like, I am a Kenyan, I'm not Ethiopian. Why are you calling me? And they were like, maybe we took the wrong nation. Like when we were writing your country, maybe we, we made a confusion. But it is you and your things have come. Go outside, take them from the car. Go and confirm if everything is there, then you come. And that is what I did. I went and checked everything. But now this lady had messed my stuff up because my suitcase she changed it to something old of which i said it's okay that is what she thought was best for her so she took my suitcase some of my clothes she took i don't know why yeah but my phone my passport everything was brought back and the same no not the same day the following day that is when i traveled but now what i saw different there is when they pay the ticket for you they don't tell you like you're traveling this day no Maybe they will just come and tell you, Pauline, get ready today. Maybe at this time you'll be traveling. Not like you said in advance, like maybe yesterday. They just tell you maybe that day or maybe even an hour or two. You'll fly. So I was called and I was told, Pauline, your ticket is being paid. Here is your ticket. So get ready. You're going home. My flight was, um, was it at 11? 11 at night no it was five because i arrived in kenya at 11 11 30 around 12 there so i was called i went and took my ticket and i just waited now for my flight i was so happy and the fact that i, I came from my house went to the police station i feel like that was the best decision that i could do and that is still the best decision that someone else can do if you are facing problems if you feel where you are, you're being pressed and you're not happy about it, do not run away. Me, I don't advise people to run away because what I saw outside there was not something to be happy about. It's not something like you can advise someone else to do. I saw people who are suffering outside there. You are there, you want to go home, but no one is there to care for you because you just ran away. You ran away because I was your friend or maybe we met online and I told you, just run away, run away and come. You not knowing me, we just met online, you decided to leave your work, nobody has messed you up, nothing was wrong and you decided to run away and come to me while you still do not know me. And that is what happened to, I can say my fellow Kenyans because there were many more than 20 
and also they were Bengali, they were Philippines, they were Indians also, also Ethiopians, I think I saw three. So not just like Kenya alone, but there were so many people because you can imagine more than 50 people, they are camping somewhere outside, at least for them to get something to eat, you know, it's not easy. You just ran away, you were promised to get a job, there's no job out there. Even if you get a job, you don't have a, you don't have your ID, you don't have your passport because you left it with a madam, you know. So those things. And remember, when you run away, they have to take your uh, your ID to the police station because you are no longer there. And when now the police station gets you, they have to check if you have your ID. And if you do not have, the case is already on the system. And when they check, they know you ran away, and they will they will arrest you. So what I can advise even before I finish this video is do not run away. If you feel like you're pressed and you, you have talked, no one is listening to you, maybe you can decide to do what I did. As for me, I didn't want to come boy, I didn't want to run away. But that is the most thing that I did and I never regret it because I don't have any case filed in my name. Nothing was done to me, no fingerprints were taken, like my record is clean there. But now the amazing part and what shocked me was even though you still don't have any case, even though you are still clear like you can go and come back in this country at whatever given time you want to come, that one thing that shocked me is I thought now because it is like you have you have your passport, you have your ticket, you have everything in view, they will just release you to take yourself to the airport and go back home. But I was wrong, nothing of that sort. As long as you are under deportation with the department, they take care of you until you exit. That is what I saw. So when this time came, we were like, Yella, Yella, we have to go. So bring your bags, bring everything, we have to go to the airport. So we went to the airport. And guys, there you are treated like VIPs. Remember, we also have criminals in the DCI, not yeah, in the base deportation. We have so many different people, you know, not just like you. You went there, you don't have any case. There are people who have cases, people who have been deported for more than even three times. They're deported, they are given a ban, they still come back again, something of that sort. And now you have to be escorted by a police station sorry by a policeman so for me i was also among those people who were escorted and i think it was fun for me it was fun because like that was my first time to be escorted by a police guy like is there another one is behind you guys and you are moving like what then the funniest thing is you go inside and even the cues that were made they have to stop and you have to check in first before other people so that is what happened and we just went checked in and when you finish checking in at that point where you cannot go back that is where the policeman will leave you and you have not to go back because once you're inside there's no turning back and that is how it happened so i bought it and get to kenya we arrived at um, 11 30 at night and it was too rainy like we went it was january it was so much rainy so we had to spend the night at the airport it was very 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 rainy. it was rainy like i don't know but that is how it ended up i got home safe and i thank god i thank god because as i told you guys i believe that my time was up in that place because when i arrived in kenya the same same week i don't know i don't know how but one of my friends we met in the flight i told you the last time the same same friend she had someone who knew the agent who first called me and then again she told me she knew of another agent now the agent who brought me here it didn't took me much actually i think i came after a month because january i was in kenya february then march i came here and I always again believe that it was God's plan because guys you can remember Corona was approaching and when I came the same same week was when it, the lockdown started and since then I don't think many people have, have traveled like before so that is what happened that was my story 
guys it is true i was deported but i thank god i had no case nothing was charged over me i had no charges yeah i was clear if now i want to go to Qatar, definitely i will go because my case is clean guys i thank you so much for staying tuned for keeping up with me thank you for listening to my stories and thank you for the likes thank you for the views guys may god bless you thank you for many subscribers if you're watching this video and you have not yet subscribed to my channel take that minute take the moment to do so and join this amazing family i thank you guys we are still growing we give god the praise and we will be blessed all stay tuned for the next video do not forget to stay safe i love you guys and may god bless you bye